you've come to search for the full testosterone guide to absolutely destroy the blood tests that the doctors give you. I totally understand it, man. I was there at one point. I had purple hair this long down to here. I had probably more estrogen than testosterone at the time. But now I have gone to the gym. I've done plenty of things to actually bring my testosterone levels through the roof. And so that's what I'm doing today is I'm going to teach you how to become a fucking gorilla, the full testosterone guy. So first things first is you need to know that your testosterone is already probably pretty high. Most young men have high testosterone and, you know, through the ages of 18 to 20, your testosterone is going to be through the roof. There can be things that are going to limit your testosterone production. However, testosterone production doesn't actually drop off until about age 40 in men. So you probably already have pretty high testosterone. But to get into it, first phase one of becoming a gorilla is the cleanup phase. So this is the cleanup phase because you need to be able to clean up your lifestyle before you can actually get to increasing your testosterone. So things like this would be lifting heavy weights, going to the gym, lifting heavy weights, throwing that shit around like a gorilla is going to make you feel like you have more testosterone because you also will have more testosterone. Every time after you lift weights, your testosterone increases. And the second thing is being unfuck your brain. So bad mental health does affect your testosterone a little bit. But the reason that I'm telling you to do that is because it's going to build that discipline. You're going to have the discipline to be able to follow the rest of this guide after you unfuck your brain. And when I was at that low T level that I was talking about earlier, when I had long purple hair, I also had a fucked mentality. I did plenty of things I wasn't supposed to be doing, but also as far as mental health wise, I was depressed. I was seeing a therapist for it. I, you know, was laying in bed all day, just playing video games all day long, nothing to improve my mental health. So things that helped me personally actually excel and unfuck my brain was gratitude journaling, thought journaling every morning, exercising has been proven to actually work better than antidepressants, just cleaning up my diet and reading a lot of self-help books. I mean, the self-help books and actually applying them is what really helped me. And then I lift heavy weights again. You know, you got to lift twice a day. You don't really have to, but just to reemphasize that fact, sleep seven to eight hours a night. So sleeping seven to eight hours does increase testosterone because less than seven decreases testosterone. I'll be honest, I sleep six and a half hours most nights because I feel like I'm more productive that way. Is it bad for testosterone production? For sure. But I feel like I, I uh, am more productive off six and a half hours of sleep. Just know that seven and a half, seven to eight will get you the best testosterone production. Touch grass, bro. So touching grass, what the fuck does that mean? You understand that you probably are in a similar place to where I was a few years ago, where I'm sitting there playing video games all day. My screen time on my phone is 12 hours. How is my screen time 12 hours when I play 14 hours on a video game? Well, because for the first couple hours of the day, I would lay there just scrolling on TikTok, you know, just blah, 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 until I finally got the willpower to get out of bed and take a shower. And then I just got on my fucking computer, played games, and in between matches, I'm sitting there scrolling. Every time I die, I'm sitting there scrolling. So I'd have such a high screen time, so much dopamine, wasn't going outside enough. Touch grass. The reason I'm telling you to touch grass is one, you need to get the fuck outside. Two, is because that sunlight gives you vitamin D, and vitamin D actually helps you produce testosterone. You can take vitamin D supplements, but if you're sitting inside all day, that's just not good for you anyway. So go outside and touch some grass today, bro. Send me a picture of the fucking grass that you've touched today. More protein. Everybody needs more protein. So protein, I mean, it helps muscles. It also helps testosterone. To give you a quick recommendation, you need about one gram. It's like 0.7 grams, but just round it up to one. I'm 155 pounds, so I should be taking about 155 grams of protein. I take more than doctors recommend. I take 200. Doctors will say, oh, you can't take that much. You won't be able to absorb it. I don't care if I can absorb it or not. I like the number 200. It sounds like a lot. I feel like a fucking beast when I get 200 grams of protein. So that's how much I take. But realistically, you should only take about one gram per uh, pound of body weight. Drink more water, bro. So drinking four liters or one gallon, you know, depending on what system you use. You need to drink that much. It's good for testosterone production. It's it's overall just going to make you feel better. It's going to help you unfuck your brain. And stop mouth breathing, right? 
So mouth breathing does impact your testosterone production, but also this is the cleanup guide mainly. So these things help you increase testosterone production, but it's also gonna help you look better. So breathing through your nose is gonna help you form that jawline. Actually breathing through your mouth is gonna give you that jawline where it's kind of like you got a double chin, even though you're really skinny. Um, and I did have that when I was, you know, low T, uh, because I, I didn't think I was breathing through my mouth a lot. But once I actually started acknowledging that I need to breathe through my nose, breathe through my diaphragm down here rather than in my chest, got more of a sharp jawline pretty quickly. But you got to get the basics down, guys. So the reason I put phase one, the cleanup stage, is because it's the basics. You need to get the basics down before you move through these phases. Because a lot of these phases, they're going to start getting more complicated very quickly. And if you don't have the basics down, you won't have that discipline or mindset to be able to actually carry out the rest of the phases that I'm giving you. So phase two of becoming a gorilla is healthy habits. So like I said, it gets a little more complicated, more willpower right after. Atomic Habits is a great book, by the way, to help you actually get these habits down. But some of them... The first two is no porn, semen retention. So no porn, it's going to help you with your self-control. It's going to help you stay on your mission. Your mission as a man it depends on who you are. But when you sit there and you scroll through Pornhub and you're looking, bro. Trust me, I used to do too, man. You're looking fucking hours, man. You find like on page 38, the best video. You find the best video of some woman online getting you know, and that's your mission. You fulfilled your mission at that point. You spent two hours searching for the perfect video. And so you've actually replaced your main masculine mission with finding a video online. And that gives you a dopamine hit instantly. But then watching the video and doing the deed after watching the video gives you that dopamine hit again. So you're getting two dopamine hits. And with these, with these dopamine hits, what you're doing is you're actually giving yourself less motivation and you're also sacrificing your main mission and because you're getting the reward system in your brain to go off without actually doing any work you're going to lower your testosterone that way and then semen retention kind of gets led right into it so if you were to just watch the video not do anything after you would technically have a little bit of a higher testosterone but you're still replacing that masculine mission that you need to accomplish but the semen retention so a lot of people talk about no fap no fap actually doesn't have that many benefits except self-control. If you aren't having sex as well, then no fap is just semen retention. But if you are having sex, then retaining your semen is what's going to give you those higher testosterone benefits. It's going to give you all those benefits that no fap talks about because they're actually talking about semen retention. Then hit workouts. So high interval training workouts basically is like just high intensity for like five minutes. And not only does it increase your testosterone, lower your fat, but it actually increases muscle growth too. There's been studies that show if you do five minutes on, one minute off, five minutes on, so eventually you get 20 minutes of hit, right? If you do that right before a heavy lifting session, it'll actually increase your muscle growth rather than inhibiting it like most people believe. Like most people say cardio kills gains, right? If you actually do the HIT cardio before your workout, just for 20 minutes, you'll actually have more muscle growth. Competition, bro. I, don't, I actually didn't look this one up. I don't even know if it increases testosterone. But the reason I put it on here is because think about it. So in high school football, right, there's one team and another team. We're going to imagine the front linemen. So the linemen are sitting there. They're ready. At the moment, the fucking guy says, hut. And so they're just sitting there ready like fucking gorillas, ready to explode into the enemy. And so they're sitting there. Their testosterone is through the roof. Their adrenaline is through the roof. They're ready to blow through whoever's in front of them. So one, they feel more masculine. They're competing against the other team. They are ready to achieve that masculine mission I was talking about. But not only are they increasing their testosterone in that way, but having that competition between teammates, and this is why I said high school, because that lineman that's fucking ready to plow through the guy in front of him, he's competing with the other lineman on his own team. Why? Because he wants to get to the NFL. That's his masculine mission. He wants to be in the NFL, okay? 
So he has to be the best of the best out of all the linemen on his high school team to get to the NFL. So competition will not only make you the best possible version of yourself, but it's going to make you an absolute fucking gorilla. That's why I don't give a fuck if it increases testosterone because I want you guys to be fucking gorillas. Okay. Cold showers. Everybody knows tons of benefits. It increases your immune system health. It increases testosterone. does a lot of things. And it's for like one to three minutes is when you see those benefits. But when you're first starting out, do about 10 to 30 seconds just to build that habit up rather than going a full one to three minutes and then not ever doing it again. Build it up by just doing 10 to 30 seconds at the beginning and then actually build into that one to three minutes so you can start getting those benefits. Phase 2.1 of becoming a gorilla is diet. I put it as 2.1 because I'm sure once you got to two, you were already waiting for the diet. So 2.1, so you guys aren't bitching. So there's a lot of things on here, right? So to cover the first couple, healthy fats. So a lot of doctors say, oh, fat's not good for you. Fat's going to fuck up your heart. It's going to clog your... Right. So it will, depending on the fats you're eating. That's why I said healthy fats. So things like seed oils are unhealthy fats. And so that they will actually negatively impact your health a lot. But eating healthy fats like eggs and uh, steak and things like that, that have those natural fats in them, that's actually really good for your body and it'll increase your testosterone production and it's just overall good for your health. And then getting rid of seed oils, I kind of just explained why. There's tons of research on why they're bad for you. They cause cancer, they cause heart problems, among others. Drop the weight. So the reason I say drop the weight is because it doesn't matter if you're obese or you're skinny fat. You need to drop that body fat. And so the ideal body fat for testosterone production is 10 to 20% body fat. You'll be able to see your abs, okay, without flexing. So don't worry about that. And you'll increase your testosterone production. If it's above 12%, I mean, depending on where you're at, if you're like highly above 12%, like you're at 35% or something, it will impact your testosterone production very negatively. But if you're like 13, 15, you know, it's not going to impact it that much. But if you go below 10 you will also see a drop in testosterone production. And you might think, oh, well, the professional bodybuilders, you know, they fucking... Right. The professional bodybuilders do drop below during competition. 5% body fat is usually what they're sitting at. That's extremely unhealthy. They don't maintain that throughout the season. And if you actually listen to any of these professional bodybuilders, they talk about how low their sex drive was, how low they felt during this time. It's because their testosterone production tanked once they hit that 5% body fat. So try to keep it between 10 and 12. Like I said, whether you're skinny, fat, or obese, you need to drop that weight, bro. Less sugar. It's gonna kind of help with all the things I was just talking about. But sugar, again, with the, with the you know, no corn thing, it's going to set off those reward centers in your brain. And so just eating less sugar is gonna help you drop the weight. It's gonna help you on your masculine mission. It's overall just gonna increase your testosterone. Healthy water, I said healthy water because there's a lot of different things in the water. You can actually look it up online. There's a site, um, I don't remember what it's called. It's like something tap, like your tap water or something. And you can actually type in your city and it'll tell you what all your tap water actually has in it. And I checked out the city I'm in right now. And basically it was like, there was arsenic, which is rat poison. There was fluoride and there was mercury levels. There's a bunch of shit in there that is not supposed to be in your water. So you can either get a zero filter, that's what it's called. You can pick them up at Target. They're very good filters. They'll filter out very much almost everything except the minerals. And that's important because you want the minerals. Those are your electrolytes. That's how you're gonna stay hydrated. Or you can distill or use reverse osmosis on your water. These basically kill everything in your water, including the minerals. I do, in fact, use a distiller. However, I have to re-add the minerals back in because if you're just drinking pure distilled or reverse osmosis water, it's actually going to dehydrate you because you're not getting the electrolytes in it. So it's going to detox your entire body and you're going to just be pissing every, every five seconds. So you have to add those minerals back in. And the distiller will run you like 150, uh, depending on the distiller you get, 150, 200. I think I got mine on sale. It was like 100, 120. And then a reverse osmosis system is super expensive. I wouldn't even recommend getting it because you're going to have to remineralize your water after anyway. The zero filter is like $30 or $50 at Target. So, I mean, your best bet's probably the zero filter. And then just very quickly, no dairy, no alcohol, no drugs, no artificial sweeteners, no dairy. 
lactate, lactose, it kind of all combines with estrogen and is estrogenic for you. So it'll create more estrogen in your body, um, which obviously estrogen is a female hormone, if you didn't know. So obviously having more female hormone than male hormone is not good for testosterone. No alcohol. Like I think it was like 30 minutes after drinking alcohol, you already see a testosterone drop. So just 30 minutes after having one alcoholic beverage and your testosterone drops, like, is it that worth it, bro? Do you really need that drink? Right? Thankfully, I didn't even like drinking. So that wasn't a big thing for me. No drugs. This one was a hard one for me. Um, not recently, but a couple years ago because I had to quit smoking weed, man. But it actually is very harmful for your testosterone production. I also think personally that it's harmful for your well-being for your state of mind, as well as for productivity. Because I know that there's indica and sativa, bro, if you smoke a bro, bro, no matter what, I, I actually could smoke an indica and I would be hype all, all day. But I don't wanna do work is the thing, is I'll be hyped to do something, but not work, right? So if you want to fulfill your masculine mission, you gotta drop that, bro. It, because not only is it gonna inhibit your masculine mission, it's also going to drop your testosterone levels. And then no artificial sweeteners. I hear plenty of people say things like, well, there's no conclusive studies. I don't care, bro. If it's not natural, don't put it in your body. Whether there's inconclusive or conclusive studies, studies have shown it's a drop testosterone. And it's not man or and it's man-made, bro. It ain't natural. So drop it anyway. And then just to remind you guys, consistency isn't linear. So when you're starting all these different habits, you might think like, oh, dude, I'm on the up. I'm on the up, bro. But then one day you have a bad day and you drop. So it's going to look more like this graph on the screen rather than, you know, just a straight line. That's why I was telling you guys to build the basics because right now you're down here. OK, so if you had healthy habits and they were going up, they were going up. But then one day you fucked off dropping to rock bottom again. You're going to feel like trash again. Binge eating, laying in bed all day all that. But if you elevate yourself by building the basics and you make sure you at least hit these every day, then instead of going up here and crashing all the way down here, you go up here and just crash back down to the basics. But at least you won't be in bed all day. At least you won't be binge eating. At least you won't feel like trash. At least you'll just have not followed some of the good habits, but you'll have those basics that I was kind of harping on in the beginning, that cleanup stage. Then phase three of becoming a gorilla is the refinement phase. Phase, I put this as phase three and told you guys to build those first back there. Phase one, phase two, phase 2.1. Because if you start doing phase three without building the basics, building the fundamentals, you will look like you belong in this insane asylum right here. You look like you should be admitted here. Because if you are eating out of plastic and only wearing cotton and and not keeping your phone in your pocket, but you're eating like trash, not going to the gym, people are gonna be like, what Like, what the fuck is the disconnect in your brain, bro? Or if you're trying to inspire others to take the same life changes you have, if you start telling them, don't eat out of plastic anymore, only wear cotton, don't keep your phone in your pocket, they're gonna be like, who are you to tell me, bro? You don't even work out. You don't even eat good food. I don't care if you eat out of glass. Your food's trash. You eat McDonald's out of glass. Who cares? Right? So you have to build those fundamentals first or else you're going to look fucking insane. But to get to phase three, this is this is more so once you start just kind of optimizing your testosterone production before was things that you could practically do. Now it's just optimization and refinement. So natural everything, pretty much natural hygiene, natural cleaning, natural food, grass fed, grass finished, everything. Because like with natural hygiene, like your toothbrush, for example, has a lot of microplastics in it. Those, when they get into your system, decrease testosterone production. So using bamboo is better and just things like that. Natural cleaning, there's actually certain um, things that are in cleaning products that when they vaporize or when the smell gets in the atmosphere, you actually, you know, when you inhale something, the particles get in your nose. That's why you can smell it. So when you take a shit and you can smell your shit, it's because shit particles are in your nose. So think about that next time. But anyway, um, so in cleaning products, there's some things that do uh, inhibit testosterone production. So just use natural ones like vinegar and water 
with some lemon in it. Lemon because it's a little bit antibacterial, but because it makes it smell better than fucking vinegar. Um, that's better for you. Shower head filter. So it's kind of the same thing as why you're drinking natural water. So drinking healthier water without all the bullshit in it is better for you, right? But when you take a shower, take a bath, you actually are absorbing the water through your skin. I don't know if you knew that, but you absorb the water through your skin. You actually get hydrated through your skin. So having a shower head filter that gets rid of the same things that you're getting rid of in your drinking water is going to be good because you're not going to absorb those things through your skin either. And then cotton underwear. I said cotton underwear specifically because wearing cotton on your balls is good for you. When you're wearing plastic or polyester on your balls, that is when your little swimmers down there start to actually die off. You lose a lot of swimmer production and therefore you also lose a lot of testosterone and sleeping naked. So <clears throat> I don't really know why. I mean, the studies show that it does increase testosterone. I have no clue why though. Like just the difference between putting on and taking off clothes. Somehow when you sleep, it increases your testosterone production. So pretty simple tip. And then losing the phone, so this one is kind of harder to follow. That's why it's in the refinement stage. Keeping your phone in your pocket is very close to your, to your jewels down there. So your phone emits a certain amount of radiation, and that radiation kills your swimmers, kills your testosterone production. So keeping it outside your pocket somewhere, I mean, I wouldn't recommend it close to your head or your heart either because you don't want radiation on those. But keeping it somewhere else other than your pocket or on your person is going to be better for you, for testosterone, for general health. And then also when you go to sleep, putting it on the charger far away from your bed and then actually turning it on airplane mode is going to decrease the amount of radiation that you are gonna get. If you can keep it in a different room, that's optimal. And putting it on, on airplane mode, for some reason decreases the amount of EMF radiation that's emitted from the phone. And then don't wear poly polyester or plastic in general. So, just switching to cotton things or wool or just to natural materials rather than man-made materials, again, all natural, it's going to help your testosterone production is better for you. Because like I said, your skin absorbs water, your skin absorbs chemicals and different things that are within your clothing as well. And then don't eat or drink out of plastic. It's kind of the same thing as I was talking about cotton underwear. So you're absorbing those, those microplastics through your body. When you brush your teeth, you're absorbing the microplastics through the toothbrush. When you eat or drink out of plastic, some of that actually gets into your food, the microplastics, or into your water. And that's why, like, on the water bottles, you'll see it says, like, BPA-free. Whoops. It says, like, BPA-free or something, right? So BPA is, like, a harmful version of plastic. But overall, any microplastics are bad for you. So get rid of the plastic water bottles. Get rid of the plastic cups. Get rid of the plastic dishes. You need to only eat or drink out of ceramic, clay, glass, copper, you know, things like that. And then avoid chlorine. So obviously I don't think a lot of you guys swim every single day, but avoiding chlorine is good because think about swimmers, professional swimmers. When they swim, you'll, you'll notice their hair it kind of turns a certain tint of green. That's the same color your hair turns when you get it bleached at the salon. I know because to dye my hair purple, I had to get it bleached. So that's the same color as bleaching your hair. So if it bleaches their hair, how do you think that impacts your body? So just try to avoid the chlorine. And then last thing is the supplements. So some of these you can use during the other phases and it'll help you overall with health. But other ones I wouldn't really recommend using until after. So omega-3 fish oil and ashwagandha are pretty much the two that I would recommend using uh, while you're actually going through the phases because they're good for all around health. Ashwagandha is kind of iffy. It's like, it lowers your cortisol, so it's gonna lower your stress, basically, um, and your testosterone. So like, if your testosterone's right here and your cortisol's up here, testosterone's actually gonna get dip, dip down. But if your testosterone and cortisol are the same, they're gonna be pretty similar. When your cortisol lowers, your testosterone actually rises. So taking ashwagandha um, increases testosterone that way but also it's just gonna help you with dealing with stress and that's kind of why I'm recommending taking it during the phases. Omega-3 fish oil is good for your heart health, brain health, a lot of different things. So you could just take that as a general supplement. 
And then Tunga Ali and Turkish Drone, very good for uh, testosterone production. Same thing with Fedosia. For Tunga Ali and Turkish Drone, they basically are like a natural version of anabolic steroids. So if you're planning on taking steroids, don't. Just take Tonga Ali and Turkestrone. There's plenty of supplements that combine both of them. But if you're not going to take steroids, just wait to take those to like phase three when you're just looking to optimize everything. And then ginger, I left that one last because it's kind of just like it's whenever you feel like doing it. I don't really like the taste of ginger. I still drink ginger and turmeric tea. I just don't think it tastes that well, but you can use it. It's more of like an optimization thing because once you've maxed out all your basic stats, then you can start trying like these things out where you're taking ginger, taking Tunga Ali, Fadjia, Turkish Strone, all those to see how high you can get your levels. But it's not really going to help you as much at the beginning as like ashwagandha and omega-3 fish oil as well. This is the complete guide to becoming a gorilla and how to actually fully increase your testosterone from step one. I will link some of the uh, things I was talking about, like the zero filter distillers, all that. I'll link it in the description. If you want to check it out, feel free. None of them are affiliate codes. I don't really care about the affiliate shit. I just want you guys to be able to get the materials that you need. Remember, guys, always live your life to the fullest and praise God.